So uh, here we are, another uh, fantastic week, and uh, Marty's already sitting there with uh, the the paint of the black stuff, and and you've got more black stuff, Marty. More black stuff, and I also have this. this wow! Uh, awesome. This, so, this is what so tell doing. me and tell me no more. We all know what we're doing this week, but tell us what we're doing tonight, Justin. We have. An exclusive. We have been sent by the wonderful people down at the Sleeve League Distillers a bottle of Cask Strength Dark Silky. Okay? And we'll talk about this a little bit later and then we'll have a tasting of it. Now, this is not available in the shops. You can't buy this. Okay? This is 64.5% ABV. Okay? Puzzle. Puzzle. <laughs> go back to the moon. This is what they would fire him up with. You know, this is this is going to be amazing. Is this going to warm my cockles tonight, Justin? After last week, no. I'm going to have to address something fairly quickly here. After last week, and you said about the the the, the, the naming of penises and stuff, right? I think <laughs> I think we should run another competition where we 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 name your penis and. Uh, then we'll get the Queen round to smash a bottle off, you know, like a ship or maybe a small boat or a tugboat would maybe be a bit hey, We never get any complaints about that. We ne we never get any complaints about that whatsoever. I wasn't going to mention that again. Actually, I, I heard somebody say the F word in the radio today and the presenter never apologised and pretended that he didn't hear it and nobody heard it and nobody heard it. But anyway, we, 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 we won't go down that route again. We won't go down that route again. So... Well, but what we've got here has been sent out by the wonderful people down at the Sleeve League Distillers. And it is 64.5%. So this is the dark silky, okay? Uh, now, hopefully, everyone received their bottles that were sent out. And what we'll do is we'll do a tasting. And uh, I, have, I have a full bottle here, which I have to say I really like. And I, it's a strange... Silky is a strange one because there's... This is the dark silky, but there's also the original silky, the the the, the, the unpeated version. Uh, they both they both do the same thing. When I opened them, neither of them I thought mm, it's not super, and then it just sort of gets better and better and better and better as you go down the bottle. I've I haven't had this very long, and I've been drinking away at it, and I think it's it just keeps getting better. So I'm looking forward to this. You're going to have to tell us. Okay. What's what's the difference? How do you get the peat into the darn thing in the first place? Because we always get asked this. How do you get the peat into it? Right. What happens is the when you when you malt the barley, what happens is you take barley, you you basically trick it into thinking that it's going to be growing in the soil. You wet it and give it a little bit of heat, and uh, what happens then is it, it it begins to sprout or it heads towards sprouting. And then you stop it. And what happens then is it, it contains more sugar. But you have to dry it out uh, to stop it growing. And what they do then is they smoke it with, with peat. And the peat comes in. And when the peat comes in, it then imparts all these phenolic flavours, these chemically flavours, the, the smoky, the bonfire, um, the, the tarry sort of notes that comes into it. So that, that's where that the peak comes in at that point. Now, after you distill the the the, the peak the peak from in the barley until it gets to your bottle does decrease in terms of parts per million. But you can get really really smoky, really heavily peat it, depend on how much smoke peat smoke you put into it. Okay. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, this is the thirty-third new distillery in in Ireland. It's it's it, they they have been going for a little while, um, in terms of bringing out whiskey. Now, lots and lots of people get very, um, how would you put it? They they think everybody should have a distillery, just whiskey, um, but that's not really how the 
bulk of whiskey was it has ever really been sold. Lots of people buy whiskey in from distilleries made to their specifications and then they finish it whatever way they want and then sell it on. This is not made in a distillery in Donegal. Okay, the spirit's not. Now, that's not to say that it's not a product of Donegal because the barley might have come from England. Uh, it could have been made. That I don't know where this was made, the spirit, but it has been finished through the specifications of the man who wants it made the way he wants it made. So it's every bit as, as good a product. You know, it, it's aged, it's finished in casks, in the way that, that, that James, the guy who to, who owns it, has one that it done. Now, later on, we'll talk about how they are building a distillery. They're getting their distillery up and running. Yes, because uh, they're, they're doing very well on a from crowd plund- funding platform at the minute. Yeah, we'll talk about that later on and how, how people can actually buy in and become a, a, an owner, an owner of their own distillery, be part of the whole story. That sounds good to me. Another Ulster distillery, you know, up, up, up in the North Ulster guys. Now, I want to talk, I want to talk about Donegal, okay, because Donegal's kind of exceptional in the Irish whiskey world, okay? In terms of Irish whiskey, Donegal has very little um, whiskey heritage. And I say whiskey heritage, I put it in, in quotation mark, because it's never really had a major legal distillery. Okay? They what, have, are you, what, what are you implying, Marty? What, 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 are you, what are you implying here? I'm not implying anything, Justin. I'm actually directly saying, because, I'll give you an example. This book details, and gives in great detail, the history of Donegal Potting. Okay? Uh, there only really was one distillery of any significance in Donegal, uh, and it only lasted for about 25 years. And the reason it lasted was because they weren't in any direct competition with the illicit distillers, the potching makers. Okay? And these Is po- this these guys here? These guys here that look like they're they're up to no up to no good there. No. Do you remember I showed you was it last week or a couple of weeks? Last week I think it was with the stills. Um basically a milk churn and a bucket. This is a more sophisticated operation. Those of these guys would have had this would have been their main source of income. And they'd have been a lot more sophisticated than the guy who was just doing it in his back shed, uh, you know, out of a milk churn. These guys would have done it an awful lot better. Uh, so they weren't in any direct... The, the big, the, a, a decent-sized distillery coming online would not have been in any real direct competition with these guys because they couldn't afford to. They'd have had to pay their taxes. These guys weren't. They, there was one, as I say, one fairly reasonable-sized distillery in Donegal. Now, that picture is from that book. And this shows you the people in Donegal. They didn't have a huge amount of money. These were impoverished people, essentially. Yeah. So what they were doing was they were taking a crop, barley. And it's important that it's not just barley. There's a, there's a key point in this. Uh they were taking the likes of barley and turning it into a fairly easily transportable product that they could sell over a distance that wasn't um, limited spirit for a very long time. Uh, and it was more profitable. They were adding value to it, et cetera, et cetera. So they were upscaling it, if you like, and taking barley. Also, oops, that's a key point. This is a very key point for later on. Uh, taking these cereals, turn them into much more of a cash product and, and moving them on. Now, the barley growers in Donegal at one point uh, gave a guarantee to the people, to the poaching makers, uh, that if you buy my barley, if you get caught, I'll pay your fines. Wow, you know? that's a serious <laughs> offer. Serious offer. But that's, that's how big a business poaching was in Donegal. Now, you have to remember... 
Irish people took whiskey over to Scotland, okay? But you also had lots of Scots coming back again. They just, nice, for years and years, centuries, you had this to and fro in motion. But in the sort of late 17th century, there was the, the, the Ulster Plantation. There was lots of Scots basically came, move, came in fairly quickly into Ireland. And they would have brought over lots of their skills over with them. So you had this sort of really rich blend. Now, Irish whiskey, by tradition, is seen as being triple distilled and unpeated. Now, James, who, again, uh, owns the, the, the Sleeve League, the, or the Selkie brand, he's quite passionate that traditionally, in, in this part of the world, and certainly up this way as well, people haven't access to coal. I mean, there's not there's not vast coal mines in in Ireland. There never there, there just isn't. We 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 could tell the story about how they used to bring the coal from the orchard to pretend it was here to sell it to people. <laughs> you know that one, don't you? That's a bit cheeky. <laughs> the thing is, what they, what they had was they had peat. So if you if you were malting barley, how you would have dried it out is you'd have peated it because you had nothing else really to do. It. These people were working for very small. They were working on very small amounts of money. They hadn't money to go and buy coal to buy a, a, a drying. You know, they didn't have that. So they would have, they would have most potchin would have had at least some uh, peated malt in it. So it would, ha it would have had that smoky taste. Now, these guys were illegal producers. Okay, they were illicit makers of, of whiskey. Um, I said about the 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 Burt Distillery, the, the the one sort of major, wasn't even that big, uh, producer. He he gave a, in court. He gave a, a statement saying that the problem is they keep sending over English revenue men. Now you imagine some boy coming. This this was the early nineteenth century. This was way back in the in the early nineteenth century. You imagine you're bringing someone over from London or wherever and planting them into the middle of Donegal. <laughs> He wouldn't have been able to speak the language. He wouldn't have had a clue about the terrain. He wouldn't have had a notion about any of this. So these guys were able to sort of get away with lots of bits and pieces. They were able to get away with more than they probably would have had in Dublin, for example, uh, or Dublin County. Um, the, how, how shrewd some of these pot chain makers were was they used to do revenue men for trespassing. Okay? Now, James, just as a slight aside, James is a duckery. Anyone from around these parts knows that County, County Derry, and over in Donegal, there's lots of dockeries, lots of them. And one of these man, men, a James Dockery, he actually sued the revenue men for trespassing on his ground. Now, he was a distiller, he was a potion maker. And he was awarded the sum of three hundred pounds, which this, was a sizable sum then. This was in eighteen twenty three, so this was an enormous amount of money because they had trespassed on his ground. So there was there's a, very, a slightly a, a fine balance of how these guys operate. You know, um, cat and mouse a lot of the time. Sometimes the the, the pot chain makers won a lot of the time. The revenue men won, but. I would, I would strongly advise getting this book because it's very, very interesting. It's a bit of social history. It's a bit of um, whiskey making history. It's you know, there's lots of interesting stuff on it that sort of does away a lot of the cliche stuff that people think. Right. Really right. good. Okay, now listen, we've got an awful lot to get through this week. Uh, this is probably going to be a record breaking week. I can I can feel it in my bones. And I can see the stats. All right. We're a quarter of the way through. We better say hi to these people. Dean Martin, you little old wine drinker, me. Good evening to you. Uh, Michael Matthews, good evening to you. Uh, Patrick Mulkey, uh, good evening to you as well. Uh, Trevor Watson is, is still down in Fermanagh. He must have taken up residence. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, Tony Sillett saying it's strong stuff. At sixty four percent, is it? What is it? Sixty four point five, or is it? Sixty four point five. Uh, good evening from the Lone Star State in Texas. Good evening to you. Uh, Dean Martin is saying 
Uh, as long as he doesn't so oh gosh you're terrible we'll have to we'll have to censor that one <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got he's gonna ruin my chances of getting the OBE for this uh tony kian good evening um uh there's the man himself james moira doherty evening lads that's a str strangely surreal yeah. opening listen i'm going to tell you even more surreal one james I thought your name was Moira, as in Ma Ma Myra Doherty. I didn't realize Moira is your wife's name until you <laughs> sent me the compliment slip with the bottle. You know that was a nice touch. You know, but I was yeah. I was flapping the compliment slip around, saying, "Where's the Jack? Where's the Jack? I couldn't find it." But listen, <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're watching over there in Donegal. Hope the weather's not blowing the head off you. Uh, yeah. JP Brown is saying, "Evening, everyone." Uh, evening to you. Look, he's with these go excellent with uh, these go excellent with uh, whiskies. There's Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so it must be in a potato park. I know somebody was potato park there, and it was it, it, it was a good time. Uh, Shane Follow is, is saying, uh, missed the competition for this. <laughs> if you've a wee spur bottle to send it to me, Shane, better luck next time because yeah. the po the postman gets lucky every time we do this. <laughs> hey, there was one of our other competition winners a, a few weeks ago. Hey, tell, tell the story. They actually got the empty envelope, but the bottle wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> the postman delivered the bottle with or the package with the bottle. The package had been torn open, and the bottle took out, but they still sent the they still sent the package. <laughs> no, that's 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 really 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 cr cruel, really cruel, it's, it's right. really cruel. Uh, yeah. Listen, I better, I've got to do more of these. I've got to do, because I can't keep up with them because the computer fan was twirling. There was that many coming in. Uh, right. Let me see. Uh, Judy Mason is nothing better than a peated whiskey. Couldn't agree more with you. Uh, there's James, Great Northern. There you go. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, Dean Martin is saying, uh, Julie Mason, I don't like Pete. I've tried, but nope. No. I don't know about I don't know about that. This one I like, and I like the Swedish one as well that you give me, Marty. The Rock. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm a fan of peated and cast strength whiskey. So good luck to Sleeve League. Yes, no. S uh, Sleeve League. This is this is look 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 at this picture. What do you see where the where, where they're based? Look look at that there. Have you ever seen a more picturesque place in all your life? See, this is the thing. Everybody goes to the Cliffs of Moher, right? There's mm -hmm. a visited site in Ireland. People go to the Cliffs of Moher. Down, down in Donegal, the cliffs are actually three times higher. They're the highest cliffs in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody goes to the Cliffs of Moher. I know it's handier and I know all that. Everybody's bowled over by it. But this this is a fantastic part of the world. It's just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And This, this, yeah. this picture, Marty, is like, the, is like going to... Uh, the Grand Canyon, when you actually stand there, right, you cannot appreciate the scale of that picture unless you stand in that car park and look. It's that fantastic. You can actually see the weather coming in up the coast when you stand there at Sleevely. And whatever you do, don't don't ever go up Dead Man's Path because it's, it's massively wide, but when you're up there, it feels like you're walking the plank. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. So listen, we're, we're twenty minutes in. We better get round to doing this one. Frank Hearn is saying, "Oh, Me? it smells! It smells Frank. heavenly! Can't wait." Uh, we'll get th we'll get through the rest of them after this. Let let's let's have a go at it. Now we'll crack her open. What we'll do is we'll give it a little pour and let it decant for a little bit. Okay. Now bear in mind this is sixty four and a half percent. Now. No matter what anybody says, the human body is not really designed to drink anything at that strength, okay? But it's nice to have a little sip of it. So let it sit there for a little bit, um, decant, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about the whole background of the distillery and James and so on and so forth. James was born over in England, but his parents are all from Donegal. His grandparents are all from Donegal, etc., etc., and his, both his grandfathers were... I think it's probably we've, we've, we've went outside the the the, the, the law. Legal <laughs> is he one of these people that's Irish that says he's English? That's English that says he's Irish and stuff like that. There get awfully confused. 
No, he's he's de- very definitely Irish. He just happened to have been born in England. But all right, <laughs> his his grandparents, his two grandfathers were pot team makers. I think we're outside the statute of limitations. I think we're okay. <laughs> but uh, he, he, he's, he's led a pretty interesting life. Uh, at one point, he worked as a tea planter in Malawi. Uh, he's been a managing director of various companies, uh, including uh, Sab Miller, which in I. Which is now part of a, a merger, a hundred and seven billion dollar merger, is now the largest um, brewing company in the world. Uh, he's been a managing director of Fosters in Australia. That must have been a busy job because we all we all know what, what they like to they like their beer. Uh, William Grant's he's worked for them. He's you know he's worked all over uh, spirits and beer. Uh, he's also a keeper of the quick. Which, if anybody knows what that is, it's an award for uh, the Scotch whisky industry to tell you that you've been a, a great ambassador, you've contributed significantly to the Scotch whisky industry. So he knows so, his nuts from his bolts. So that's what you're saying. Indeed, he knows his stuff. Uh, decided that he was living in Hong Kong, and then decided that he wanted to move. When did he move from Hong Kong to Donegal? Which must have been. <laughs> for for his kids, it must have been like taking them from New York and sticking them in the middle of the Kalahari Desert. You know, it's it's a huge, a huge change for people. Uh, right down, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, anybody that's ever been to Donegal, it's I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful part of the world. Um, so went down, one day opened a distillery, has had significant backing from big players, people who have backed them. To a read up, it was three million euro. Some a couple, of, you know, was put into it. Um, so if a company's putting three million euro into into a, a venture that you're coming up with, shows they have confidence, which I think tells you everything you need to know about the man. Now we contacted him about doing this whiskey tasting, and he said, "Oh, absolutely, no problem." He watches the show pretty much every week. And he said he would send them out. So he sent out the Dark Silky Cask Strength. This is not available in the shops, folks. This is this is exclusive to us. Um, so you can't buy this. Now, we'll give you a little rundown of what exactly the Dark Silky All is. It's a mixture of um, double distilled and triple distilled peated malts and soft grain whiskey. Okay? And so it's, it's kind of got a number of different elements in it, boom, 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 you know, all these different bits and pieces, which I, I sometimes, most of the time I'm not a fan of because it's got all these different parts that jump about. Um, but when it works, it really works quite well. And this really works quite well. So it's got a nice lightness to it, but it's also got the peat to it and then it's got that smoky layer on it as well. Now, what we'll do is we'll do a nosing of this. Please don't put your nose straight into it because it's sixty-four and a half percent. The alcohol will hit you and just overpower your 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 nose. So let that come to you um, and take it from there. Because if you do put it in, it'll just overpower it and it'll take ten minutes for your your your, your senses really come back down again. So me me and my eyes water, Marty, but. I- I like that effect. <laughs> uh, well, the queen, the queen will be on the other winner then, won't she? <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, you get you get the peat. The peat's coming up there, but it's subtle. It's not. It's not heavy. I mean, I get the heather. It's very aromatic for me. It's very, very aromatic for me. 64 and a half you're getting you're, it's t- there's too much alcohol so it's not giving you what it really wants to be doing but at that it nearly smells like a gin it's nearly got like a, a gin quality that, that very light o- o- almost botanical nose to it at that it's you know what i mean it's got it's got that sort of very very high fruit that's good right? it, it is it is good marty it is. It is good. It is very good. It's good, but this is this is not. 
perfect for it. It's not. It's, it's, it's too light. There's more there. You, you can sense that there's more there. And that, that's that's the thing about cask strength whiskey. There's lots of... I like cask strength whiskeys because you get to play with it. You get to do what you want to do with it. You get the experiment. You get the... This is basically what... This is what's in a cask. This is this is basically just from a cask straight into your into this bottle. Okay. I mean, how, how many casts is it? Is it true he wants to have one thousand seven hundred filled casts every year? I'm sure he probably does. I'm sure if he could, he would want seventeen thousand casks. I mean, this is this is a man who's worked for the big players. This is a man who's worked for some of the big biggest names in brewery and spirit world, and. The distillery, we'll talk a wee bit about the distillery a wee bit later on when we talk about what he's wanting to do. But he, he wants quality. He wants to sort of pay respects to the heritage of Donegal. Now, he, he, he came out and said earlier on this week, he would love Donegal to be like the Isla of, of, Isla of Ireland. The Isla being the whiskey region in Scotland. No they, have, they have six, six, six distilleries. Yes. No, they're more, oh, more than that, Justin. But they're known. What they're known primarily for is yeah. having that pita, heavy medicinal. You know that that distinct Isla flavor. Isla whiskies. You know an Isla whiskey when you taste it, and he kind of wants done to go. Personally, I, I think, it would be nice, for for that whole Ulster region. You know, Donegal, County Down, County Under, etc., etc., to have their own distinct sort of flavour and maybe pay a little bit of homage to the fact that of the Isla, just I can see Isla from my house as <laughs> in on a clear day. So, you know, you have that that connection because they did have that Peter connection. And I know a lot of the, the other distilleries up the north end of, of Ireland are double distilling, and I know some of them are doing Peter as well. And you you could sort of see possibly where that could go that, that nice peter Irish whiskey some triple distilled peter Irish whiskies so quite light but still with that smoke but anyway mm, lovely it is and it is that it is almost like a like a, a, a like a, 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 a gin effect because that. I, my my nose gets used to it. It doesn't overpower my nose. My my nose gets used to it, and it gets even more aromatic every time I sniff. It is. It's very, but it is. It's very light. Like, I think once you put some some water in this and bring the ABV down, it will release even more, and it'll just keep getting better and better and better. Now we'll have a quick taste. Please don't take too much in this because at that ABV. That'll very easily overpower your senses. So hold on before we snip. Uh, before we snip, I've got to I've got to run through some of the people joining this week, Marty, because we're not going to get through them. And I hate disappointing. This is nearly as bad as being on the radio and getting three thousand dedications in one night, and you can't read them all out. You know, you get told off when you get to three hundred. Uh, let me see. Uh, this is uh, uh, Frank said it smells and tastes heavenly. Uh, uh, Tony Kenny saying he's just finished a hinge Peter Dram, very nice. Dean Martin, maybe just not the right one. Yes, you will find the right one, I can assure you, always. Uh, Julie Mason there, giving it the thumbs up. Uh, Stanley, uh, he's uh, mentioned Jorg Aguilera. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Song also mentioned Peter Weeks uh, as well. Uh, let me see. Dean Martin is saying, nope, try lots of peats. This one lovely, but not for me. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, Stanley Song is sharing around family and friends. Ian Ward. Peter Weeks is watching. Good evening to you, Peter. Uh, Julie Mason sent, Henge Peter is one of my very favorite whiskies. Well, I, I I can see this becoming one of our favorites. Uh, Dean Martin is, is doing a little party time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael Matthews is saying staycations allow visits to new distilleries around the country. Happy days. I'm not sure that Sleeve League is open at the minute. I'm not 100% sure it's open at the minute, uh, but it will be. A, uh, let me see. Staycations will allow visits to new distilleries. That's a repeat. Uh, Nick Soar is uh, expounding the 64%. Uh, 
Dean Martin is saying, uh, Marty, I've been told that Colin Barr from your old school done clogs says hello. I, I, I would know more about a heel of a loaf. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't like the heel of the loaf either, Marty. There you go. Uh, Nick Soar, uh, that's harsh. No. Uh, Nick Soar is, is saying, listening to you drinking Japanese whiskey. Uh, James Moridake is saying, uh, both and neither Justin, confused.com. Remember, James, I'm always playing devil's advocate uh, to uh, answer everybody's questions. Uh, Dark Silky is lovely stuff. Uh, it is lovely stuff. Uh, I got a wee bit of a poke like there you go, Anthony. At three, uh, <laughs> Marty, uh, haven't, you haven't seen my my nose? Why is that not coming up this week? I don't know why it's not coming up. Uh, the smell we are getting the peat with a peppery hit in the back of my nose. Yeah, uh, Michael Matthews is saying, uh, funny that I from Bill, uh, Bill Phil has a new peated whisk out in Waterford. He was like James. He crossed the world before coming home to start your distillery. I think when you travel the world, you come back with a lot of knowledge. You do. I think you do. But uh, I don't think if you always come back home and bring all the knowledge home, you know, you don't – people go away, but they always take it that this is something I've learned and I'm bringing it home. Not they go away and change. I, think I, I, I sent a birthday message to a guy in, in Canada the other day who's born – uh, next door to my dad has moved over to Canada when he was like 12 stayed there all his life but still classifies himself as a Palomino man still classifies himself as being a Palomino totally proud of it and he's been away and he, he came back a few years ago but he brings what he has back home and he still talks about home being here you know so yeah okay so we've, we've been enlightened before we, we get to sip this uh, James Moore Doherty is saying uh, younger malts tend to be slightly aromatic. Okay, yeah. you would have thought maybe it was the older malts uh, were more aromatic, but younger ones, yeah. The thing is, loads, loads of Irish whiskey don't necessarily take age as well as some of the scotches. Um, well, to be fair, we will wait and see, but it's basically peat. Doesn't necessarily have to stay in a cat anywhere near as long as. Um, I was going to ask you that. Why is that? Why is that? Well, because one of the things is, no matter what you do, if you have a peated whiskey, no matter what you do, it starts to loss peat content. No matter really what you do, it just it's, it's just in the makeup of it. Um, <laughs> so you're you're talking about losing. A certain percentage of the malt over a period of time, and so why why would you keep it in? You're wanting smoky flavours. Um, there's a balance there. It's the same as everything else. There's a balance. So don't people get very hung up on the age of products, thinking that a, a seventeen-year-old whiskey is going to be better than a ten-year-old. That's not necessarily true, to be honest. Um, so some of them are, some of them aren't. So. No. It's a moment of truth. Let's 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 do this. We'll take now take a sip of this. It's sixty four and a half percent. So don't be don't be taking a huge gulp of this because it will just overpower you. Mm. Straight away, you've got that lovely smoky. Um, touch at the front, but it's it's, it's a nice mild smoke. At the, it's almost like it's like being in the room with the smoker, and he's sitting a, sitting away that you can sort of taste that lovely, you know, cigar smoke, pipe smoke. Um, again, very fresh, very fresh, but the smoke the smoke sets above the 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 the, the actual aromatic flavors. Man, it's too it's too harsh in the finish at sixty four and a half. Just too harsh. You're not getting that on the finish. So we need water. We need a wee touch of water. I don't know why I like it as it is, Marty. <laughs> I, I, it reminds me of my grandfather. It is good stuff to be a fresh product. This is good stuff. Nice. So I'm going to put 
a teaspoon and a half of water in that. Okay. Okay. Now remember, at sixty-four and a half percent, to get it down to the strength of this. Okay, you're going to need about three teaspoons of water to get it down. You know that that's that's how the difference. And this is at forty-six. Most whiskies you buy are forty. So now I'm just going to pour a little drop of this out because I want to compare the two and see what where I think two are. Let that decant a little bit. Oh, there's some. You're getting that lovely toffee note. You know, there's a really nice toffee note there. Uh, with the tea, with one and a half teaspoons, it's opened up. It's giving you the, the, the toffee. There's, there's that sort of rich. There's a slight touch of like baked banana. You know, you know, like barbecue banana. I love barbecue banana. Yeah, so do I. I think it's wonderful stuff. I normally do barbecue with a bit of alcohol on it too. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. But again, there's that aromatic, that heather thing that's really there. And that that comes through on the silky and this as well. It's coming through. It's lovely. <laughs> hey, listen. This guy knows how to spin a yarn. James is saying the taste was inspired by sneaking down to pretend to puff and grand as cold pipe in the morning, dry, dusty tobacco. Well, I think he, I think it's, 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 it's. Do you know what it smells like? It smells like a top end cigar, cigar humidor. Yeah, that's what it's. Uh, yep. Funny. I was, I was talking to a guy today. He told me that. Uh, I don't even. I don't even smoke, but you know, yeah. top end I, stuff like that. I'll try. I I, I stopped smoking. I stopped smoking eleven years ago. And it's uh, one of the one of the things that I'm really really proud of myself for. But I was talking to a guy earlier on who said that he had been given a cigar that his friend told him he paid forty dollars for in Cuba. <laughs> I started laughing. I says, I don't think so. <laughs> a forty dollar cigar in Cuba, you could buy a car and the virgin who stand it was rolled on. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine went to Cuba. And I could have gone with him, but he, but he took the girlfriend instead. And he says, I'm sorry you didn't go with me, Justin. But there you go. That's another story for another day. Uh, 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 you know, I, I nearly had our man in Havana. There you go. I can't keep up with these messages tonight. Slow up. Slow up. I'm going to need slow mode uh, put in it on, on YouTube here. Let me see. Uh, probably smoking a turf pipe back in the day. Yeah, if, yep. if you didn't have tobacco, you could uh, rule uh, the turf, yeah. Uh, Dean Martin is saying, if you ever overindulge in this, you would suffer big time. I tell you, that's be that, that is beautiful. It's nice. That story. is, that is, either my nose is getting used to it or it's getting even more beautiful. See, this is the, this is the strange thing about the selfie. I honestly go up. The first time I bought the ordinary silly, I bought the, the bottom of it. I thought, oh, but indifferent. The time I got to the bottom of it, I thought it was really good. And I thought, this is kind of the same thing. You know, it, it kind of just gets better and better and better and better along the path. And I, I, I mean, this, a bottle of this is £32. Now, for £32, what you're getting in this bottle is. Quality, passion, story, complex taste, uh, something that's that's just a totally different ball game than anything else. And the heritage of Donegal Pochi Nicky. Absolutely, the whole thing. You're getting a story, and that's what that's what quality should be about. You know, if you want, you want to have some eighteen pound, you want to go and get drunk with your friends. That fine, go and do that. that that's what that's for. This is not what this is for, and for the value for money is. Sensational, sensational. Really, Michael Matthews is saying it'll cost more if it's aged, but he agrees it's not necessarily better. That's that that's 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 true. Definitely true. Def definitely definitely true. Uh, so uh, 
this is just incredible tonight. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Uh, what are what are other people saying? Oh gosh, I can't. Even, I, stay still. If the stream stays still, I can actually click and thing. Uh, somebody saying, "Has I been to Cuba?" Uh, let me see. There, oh, there's somebody disagreeing. PD whiskey. Nope. I don't know. I, I think if you don't like it, try this. Try it with a wee drop of water in it. That there, it's. I mean, it's. It's like. It's like being hugged when you come into an old thatched cottage at night. That's what it's like. Am I good at this or what? It's that like is being, what it's like. Well, put it like this. This, this, or the, these are the two. This is the, 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 the bottle. This is the one that we have the, the cast strength. Now I have a teaspoon and a half of water in this. So this is stronger than, than this one. And with this, you're getting a lot more fruity aromas. You're getting a lot more sort of lighter, esterier. Uh, I call them estuary type notes. You're getting um, slightly more pear, um, maybe baked apple. You know what I mean? That, that kind of green fruit. Yeah, not the kind of thing. On this, it's it's not. It, it's still a little bit too too high in ABV to get everything out of it, but it's still perfectly drinkable. Still getting that peat. You're still getting the. You're still getting notes there. That are not as refined as this, but they're still there. And if you like that kind of wild, would you put would you put a Mountain Dew in that, or or, or a Coke Zero, or would that would that ruin it? Well, I would hit you with a ten if you did. <laughs> okay. I, you know? Listen, I told you before I like cocktails and I like long drinks. You see, and this is a short. This is a short drink. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is. With this, you could you could make cocktails with it, um, and it's, it's I mean it's quite versatile. I would have thought you could have done pretty much anything. James earlier on was he sent me a couple of quick messages earlier on, and he said one thing you try with this is try ice in it. Now I'm I'm not a big lover of excuse me ice and whiskey, but what he said was try the ice in it because it does make it gives it a a different character, there's different characteristics come out of it just by having the ice cubes on it. So th this is one that you can play about with. And I kind of like the, the different boom, 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 parts of it all melding together and, and becoming something really, really class, you know? So, yeah. Oh, th th listen, this is good stuff. Listen, we've got about 15 minutes left tonight. We'll better cover the rest of the sleeve leg story. There is a lot to cover in this story. Mm -hmm. uh, let us tell us a bit more about it, Marty. Tell us a bit more about this. Sleeve League started off, um, they wanted to build a distillery. Uh, the, I think they ended up in a whole sort of quagmire of what they wanted to do and people and a legal sort of thing and whatnot. So, what they did was they have set up a little distillery and made their, their, their uh, gin. Now, their gin is on their card. Um, I'll just put that up there, see if you can see it. And Dulan uh, Gin, which is, it's actually a savoury gin. Which I have never tried it, but it's won lots of awards and really, really highly rate it. Now, they've had significant investment up to date, but they wanted to raise a million pounds to build a new distillery. Okay. So the way lots of things are done now, you do it by crowdfunding. And they went to Crowdcube. They wanted a million pounds. And within a few days, they surpassed a million quid. Okay. Within a few days. Now it's running for another basically a month, another 27 days. They've already went above. Today, I checked to see how much they had of the million quid, and they have £1,067,935 real. Okay? 420 people have invested in this. Kind of tells you all you need to know. Yeah. So, you, <laughs> you can have, currently, you can buy in to 
this distillery. If you like this and you think to yourself, well, I wouldn't mind putting in a share. Then that's James standing overlooking the sea. I, I, I think that's a marvellous photo, but then uh, it, it, it's a beautiful part of the world, so why would it not be a beautiful photo? So, just I'm telling people this because this could make a fantastic Christmas present, birthday present, whatever. If you want to just buy a, a single share, it's seventy five pound, okay. And that is, I have to just check this. I have to just check this. Uh, yeah, for seventy five pound, you become an Octave member. And an Octave member gets you a share in the company. You also get a a. Two a glass, you know, the wee other Irish whiskey glasses that were shown the other week. You get one of those and you become a member of the, 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 the Sleeve League family. Okay. If you want to actually make a bigger investment, there's all these different ranges all the way up. Now that's an artist impression of what the stills are going to look like when they are when they're built. Um and you can invest all the way as much as you want, essentially. Uh, they're over invested. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll start producing other things. It gives them more scope to do other stuff. And you're going to... If you, if you spend over 20000 I think it is, you get your name on the, on the still and you get your own spirit safe and you get 20% off and all of that sort of stuff. So if you go on to Crowdcube, you can see what is on offer. Honestly, as something... If, if you know someone who's a whiskey drinker and that kind of stuff, and you think, well, it's come not too far away from Christmas, buy a share. And, uh, you know, you can say to them, do you want to share in, in this distillery? Uh, this, is, this, to me, is really what whiskey should all be about. You know, vested interests and bagging any stories and all of that sort of stuff. And if you like if you like what you're tasting, then it's, it's just something... A little bit, um, it's just something a little bit more, you know. Okay, like, there's uh, a comment there. I really enjoy hearing about the history and background of the, the whiskies. Yes, it's all part of the heritage going back, uh, well, hundreds, if not thousands of years. Uh, oh, you know, uh, let me see. Uh, this is the artist's impression of what it's going to look like, actually. It's look like, and it's down in our draft, which, if anybody's ever been down in our draft, it's, it's a lovely little place. There's only I think there's about a thousand people live in it. Um, gorgeous. And what he said, what James said was he wants to make this part of the community, and uh, part of the, the whole place. You know, you, you, it's not like somewhere outside that you have to go to. You know, if you're coming in through your drive, it's going to be part of the whole thing. Obviously, they're going to create jobs and create all of that and hopefully create good tourist industry and everybody else feeds off that. Justin, you and I both know what way that works yeah so so i mean you're, you're hopefully this will be the uh, they've already raised all the money they want to raise and more already and there's still people investing in it so it shows you the confidence that they have and whenever you, whenever you taste this i mean you have to think it's, i mean must not be like you know as uh, the guy in the other famous alcohol a commercial says, this isn't an amateur. No. This is very much a professional outfit. I mean, <laughs> James knows what he's doing. He's worked all around. Now, I'll tell you how, how good this has been. His wife is the master distiller of the, the gin. So she has now bought into the whole thing. She is now doing the gin. And as I say, it's an award-winning gin. It's made made with seaweed, as far as I remember. Um, you know, that, I mean, this, this is a serious outfit. The fact that he comes on watches every week and sent out this to to the guys who won the competition, the guys girls that won the competition. Um, yeah, he, he he's doing it in a way that's approachable, that is affordable because there's. There's a lot of people now bringing out really ultra premium, really high expensive stuff. Most people are not going to drink it. It's all collectible stuff, you know. Um, so there's, it has its place. Don't get me wrong, but when it's all said and done, it's a little over 30, 32, 33 pound a bottle for forty six percent. 
it's fabulous value for money. Fabulous. It's no brain. You you were doing the, the sums there involving the duty man and saying, well, <laughs> you, you know, you, you, it's it's like buying uh, it's like buying petrol and uh, not getting it for uh, a pound a liter. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's it, I mean it's it, it's fabulous. Um, so uh, the, the comments are coming thick and fast tonight. Uh, Michael Mash is saying, thanks, James. Uh, really enjoyed your whiskey. Uh, uh, James uh, and his wife, Moira Doherty, are saying, can do expensive stuff too if you want. No, yes. No. Uh, uh, well, there's, there's always a market for that too. Uh, well, I guess anybody can make expensive stuff. It's making stuff cheap or making stuff at a reasonable price. That's the hard bit. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Is our Dara is a great town with great pubs? Yeah, and she and she's a hundred percent correct because there's actually a pub in our Dara that has a photo of uh, Brendan Bean drinking. Is it tomato juice? <laughs> Which is a, must be a rare photo. It must be a very rare. Brendan <laughs> Bean was drinking. You know, uh, so we we have a colleague did that a great uh, sort of. Uh, play uh the rare old times uh that, that was uh fantastic I, i've seen that show a couple of times and it did it made the uh sort of irish fresh festival in milwaukee uh brenton being what what a car what a character uh uh frank Harris is saying uh when on our, i have a pint of guinness and a bowl of chowder in nancy's <laughs> there you go i'm not sure nancy's is open at the minute but fingers crossed Fingers well, crossed, it'll be soon. It might be. If it's going to have a license, it might be open. It might, it might be. Uh, let me see. Send on the samples of the expensive stuff, I would imagine. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, j just we really appreciate this. People are saying uh, wonderful stuff. St you know, there's there's not actually anybody saying anything bad. There's people saying they don't like PD stuff. But they're, they're, listen, here's, here's sacrilege. Will you hear this? What? Club Lemon works in it. Don't say I said that. It's too late. You've put it out the internet. It's too late. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here's us trying to be purists. Here's James, us. you're a man after my own heart. I, I like a wee mixer. And I, I do. I do like a wee mixer. And I like chill drinks. You see, Marty doesn't even like his Guinness chill. He just he doesn't drink his Guinness out of the glass. He drinks it. He drinks it out of the tin. We had I, to tell him off. I. Listen, this is only for aesthetic purposes. I, I honestly, I just like stuff the way it comes to me, okay? So when I'm in the pub, and I, I, I had a draft Guinness earlier on. Oh, some wonderful stuff. I like my Guinness room temperature. I like most of my drinks room temperature, <laughs> except tea, obviously. Um, and I like my, my Coke channel. So that, that the... Two set of three separate categories there, but I like my whiskey pretty much the way it is, except I can play about with it with water, cast strength. That that that's just dancing about. It just does all that different again. You know, it's just totally different again. Yeah, and with this small ball, you can play about with that for hours. You, you could have hours and hours of fun with this little ball. You know, 46%. You could probably play about with that. So, yeah, I think James asked me earlier on in the week, he says, uh, I, I did a, a video review of the, the Dark Silly before it came up. I'm going to give you the extra half point, James, because this is fabulous. The cast strength is fabulous. I could have hours of fun with this. Um, I would give this easily 8 out of 10, Marty. Easily 8 out of 10. I give it eight out of ten during the week. I'm going to give him an extra half point for the cast strength. So eight and a half, eight and a half percent, eight and a half. Sorry, eight and a half percent, eight and a half out of ten. I, I keep up the good work because honestly, it's it's fabulous stuff. Right, uh, we've got five minutes left. We're going to say uh, all the best. We're going to read out the comments here, and we're going to see you next week, ten o'clock. Uh, we're getting great reports in. Shane Foley saying uh, Nancy's is open. Why is that not coming up? Uh, Nancy's is open, booking only. Uh, let me see. And they're doing uh, they're doing great cocktails. 
Donegal beers and ceviche as well. Yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like I, I like anything to do with food, and uh, yeah, I I do like a bit of uh, I do like a bit of uh, sushi as well. Let me see. Uh, Trevor Watson saying it's got is all chatting about the PD whiskey. Thanks for letting me be involved with the evening. That glad to have you along, Trevor. Glad you got the bottle. Glad the postman allegedly maybe didn't take it as, as the other week. Uh, Tony Kane is saying uh, first sulky tonight, first ever Guinness. Sorry, first, so, hold on a minute here. Tony Kane is saying first silky tonight and first Guinness too. Look up where Tony Kane lives and let's go round his house now. What, is, what, on earth is, what on earth is that man saying? What, what, what do you mean this is first Guinness? I, he must be a KGB sleeper agent if he's never had a Guinness before. Or, or is, he possibly, is he possibly about six years old or something? You know, is, there, is there something? I hope, there something? You, I hope you're not under 18 watching this or under 21 in America because I have it set that you have to be older. So don't be watching this. Please, Go please. away and watch something else if you're watching this and you're and you're under 18. First really? silky tonight and first ever Guinness too. I can't, I, hold on, Murray. I can't keep up with the comments. Hold on. Uh, thanks. Another great show. Uh, Tony's saying he's not a beer drinker. I wasn't a beer drinker, but look happened, Look what happened to me. Uh, yeah. He just wants to say thanks to you guys and thanks to James and Moira Doherty for this tasting. Yes. Uh, Julie is saying night. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks for another great show. Yeah. Uh, Chris Pryor is saying, first silky for me, it's awesome. Definitely one for me to buy. It's By good. the way, we haven't been paid to say this. No. And these people haven't been paid to say this if no. you're watching this. And I mean that. No. I mean that. All right. All I, uh, is I, get, I get in contact with some of the, the, the whiskey producers, and James, James watches this show every week. And, and thanks for doing that, James. And thank you for everything that you, you you've been really, really kind and sending this to me. Remember, this is this is exclusive. This is not available in any of the shops. So it, uh, yeah, thank you. So uh, that's about it. Anything else to add tonight, Marty? In, in the final ninety seconds. Yes, I just want to read. Luke, uh, I had it here. Uh, this sums up Donny Gall. Okay. Donegal, a man called Dean Henry, said in 1739, and I'll have to read this out because I can't remember it all. He said, Barley is mostly consumed by distilleries making aqua vitae, okay, which possibly taken in moderation might sometimes prove a cordial against the dumps of the lakes and mountains. But the immoderate use made of it by <laughs> only seems to infatuate, invariate, and impoverish the people. Basically, what he was saying was, <laughs> all the barley growing there, people end up drinking it. Which, fair enough, <laughs> because good on them, you know. Hey, it beats Weetabix. <laughs> it beats Weetabix. <laughs> no brand, as I say. Um, I, 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 I do like the the cast strength version of this, the real cast strength version of this. Is, yeah, you get to play about with it, and the ordinary one is super too. And um, yeah, well done. Okay. Uh, good night. Catch you again next week. Thanks for watching. And remember to comment, like, and share. Follow us on Facebook and on YouTube as well. I've been Justin McCartney. He's been Marty McCauley. A, a very good evening to you. Catch you same time, same place, 10pm on Irish Whiskey Review on Facebook.